Hey what's up everyone welcome back to the channel my name is Divit and in this video I'll be giving you a complete beginner's guide on how to use Zapier. By the end of this video you'll have a very good idea of what Zapier is, how to navigate their dashboard, all of these different settings what they represent. We'll go ahead and talk about what zaps are and how you can create them and then I'll show you how you can configure them properly, how you can map fields, how you can test them and basically everything else you need to know. So if all of this interests you then stick around, subscribe and let's get into today's video. Now to get started, the first thing I want to talk about is what is Zapier and why is it so important? On their website, their main headline is Automate Without Limits. And here it says, turn chaos into smooth operations by automating workflows yourself. So basically everyone, Zapier allows you to connect your favorite apps together so that they can talk to each other and work with each other. Apps like Gmail, Slack, Google Forms, Notion, and hundreds more can work together using Zapier. And the best part about Zapier is that you need no coding at all. No developers, no IT tickets, no technical knowledge. It just requires dragging and dropping different apps together to have them communicate with each other. Now when it comes to automating, there's a whole bunch of use cases. You can go ahead and automate your lead management, your sales handoffs, your marketing campaigns, your data management, and a whole bunch of other use cases. We can see right here that Zapier is trusted by 2.2 million companies worldwide and big brands like Canva, Grammarly, Lululemon use Zapier. Now when it comes to the pricing for Zapier, the very good thing here is that you can use Zapier for free. So you can test it out and see exactly what the dashboard looks like. And then if you want to go ahead and further have customized features, then you can go ahead and choose one of their paid plans which is available right here. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is actually sign up to Zapier. I already have an account. If you don't have one, just go to their homepage, press start free with Google, go through the steps which asks you what your industry is and things like that. Once you've filled it out, I'll see you in the dashboard. So once you've signed in, this is what your Zapier dashboard looks like. It's super clean and easy to navigate. On the left over here, you'll see some of your main settings. Your home is basically your main dashboard page, which is this right here. Every time you click it, it brings you back to this page. Your Discover page basically gives you a bunch of different pre-existing templates you can go ahead and use and select. So they're all available to you over here. And then if we go back to the home page, the next tab over here is your Zaps tab. Your Zaps tab is basically where you have all of your different automation setups. So the history of them are all existing here. Your tables is basically like where you can store and manage data. Think of it like a built-in mini spreadsheet that exists on Zapier, which you can go ahead and use. The interfaces option and chatbot and canvas, so all of these options right here are new options and they're basically great for building apps, bots and visual workflows. A lot of your time will be spent on your zap section and maybe even your table section. And here you have your app connections. This basically shows you which tools you've currently linked to your Zapier. So right now this is a new account so that's why I don't have any connections. And then finally you have your zap history. This is where you can see everything that's been run and how it's been set up. So that's basically all of these different settings here. You have this more tab. So this is just basically the developer platform, which I won't get into too much. And then on the top right over here, you have your account settings, which you can go ahead and play around with. So let's go back to our home tab over here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go ahead and create a test zap for you to show you exactly how this platform works. Now there's two different ways you can go ahead and set this up. The first way is using AI. So you can go ahead and type here in their AI beta exactly what kind of connection or workflow you want. You can type it in English and Zapier will basically use this AI to formulate the best workflow according to what you type. Now the way that I'm going to show you how to do it is the more traditional or manual way where we set it up by ourselves without using AI because I think it gives you better practice. So to create a new Zap, you can just go ahead and press this create button on the left and then go ahead and choose the Zaps option. The Zaps option is basically the connection you want to go ahead and set up. Now when it comes to Zaps, there are basically two main parts you need to understand. The first part is that a Zap has a trigger. This is what starts the workflow. Think of it like saying when this happens, begin this workflow. After your trigger, you have your action which is the second part. This is what Zapier does when the trigger happens. So when the trigger happens, this is what action I want to be committed. Now it's important to note that you can have multiple different actions so they can be multi-step zaps. But for this particular example, I'm going to show you a very simple example of how we can go ahead and set up a zap. 
in this particular example, I'm going to go ahead and assume that when someone submits a Google form on my website, I want Zapier to automatically send that response to a Google Sheet so that my team can then view it. So basically, I'm connecting Google Forms and Google Sheet with Zapier. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do over here is press this trigger option. So you can just go ahead and select that. And then right here, you can go ahead and choose what app you want to go ahead and begin with the trigger. So in my particular case, I'm going to go ahead and type in form. So I want Google form as the main app. So this one right here. So now we can see right here, Google forms is selected in my trigger. And now I can go ahead and choose a trigger event. And then over here, I can go ahead and connect my Google forms account. So let's go ahead and choose an event. In my case, it's going to be new form response. All right. So that's basically the trigger event that I want to go ahead and collect. And then right here under account, I can go ahead and connect my Google forms account so that it knows exactly which form to talk to. So let me just go ahead and sign in and I'll show you once it's set up. So here we are, everyone. I went ahead and connected my Google account and now I can go ahead and press the continue option. So right here now we have the exact form Google is asking us to connect. So I can just go ahead and choose it. And I have this form right here for my contact information that I've set up. And it's basically this form right here. So this is the form I want to go ahead and capture information from and put it onto my Google Sheet. So now that I have my form on here, I can go ahead and press the continue option. And then right here, I can go ahead and test the trigger by pressing test. And over here now it's testing it for me. And over here we can see it's pulled a response from my contact form, which I can just go ahead and see. All right. So basically this makes sense. The form is working properly. It's pulled a response and I can go ahead and press continue with select record. Okay. So that's good to go. So our first step is completed. Now in our second step, I'm actually going to go ahead and close this and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up the action. So to set up your action, you do the exact same process. You press the action option here and then right here, you have to go ahead and choose what the next app is. So for me, it's going to be Google Sheets. Now we can see right here for our action events, I can go ahead and choose what the exact event should be. So in my case, it's going to be this create multiple spreadsheet rows. Because basically, once again, I'm saying that every time someone creates a new response on my form, I want that to be a new record in my spreadsheet. So once I have that set up, I can just go ahead and link my Google account, which I've already done, and then press the continue option. Now the next step over here is to figure out exactly what spreadsheet. So I have a spreadsheet created called contact form submissions. It's basically this spreadsheet that you see here. And this is a spreadsheet that I want populated. So if I go back over here, I have that selected. And then in my worksheet, I can go ahead and choose which one it is. It's sheet number one. And then over here, I can just go ahead and choose the different rows, right? So I have these different rows in my spreadsheet. So you can see right here, you have name, email, address, phone number, and comments. And I can just go ahead and map that out. So I can say for the name particular field, the field that I want to map it out to is the name field in my contact form. Similarly, for my email, I do the exact same thing. I have the email field for address. I have address and you get the idea. I can just go ahead and map them out exactly how I want them so that they will appear on the right rows and columns. So once I have all of this stuff set up, I'm good to go. Now, all of my fields in my contact form, which are these fields right here, are now mapped to my spreadsheet, which are these rows and columns right here. So once I'm happy with everything over here, I can go ahead and press the continue option. And then over here, I can go ahead and press this test step option right here to test to see if actually these are getting populated accordingly. So we can see over here now, this is the sample text that was sent to my Google Sheet via Zapier. And if I go to my Google Sheet right here, we can see it's available. All right, so that's how we know it's working correctly. And I can go over here and just press the publish option. So now that it's published, now we have our Zap live. And now we can see over here, it's available to me. So this is my Zap. And if I go back to my homepage over here and click the zaps option, it will be available right here. Okay, so I can just go ahead and select it. I can go ahead and actually rename this zap. So I can just go ahead and press rename over here. And I'm going to go ahead and call this contact form Google Sheet. And then that's good to go. Now to wrap this video up, I'm going to go ahead and conduct a final live test on a form submission to show you this works in real time. So here's my form that I went ahead and populated with just some dummy data. And I'm just going to go ahead and actually submit this. And once I press the submit option, this field that I submitted should be available now in my Excel sheet. So if I go back to my Excel sheet over here, so this is our sheet. 
We can see right now there is no answer, but if I go ahead and refresh it, it takes about a second or so, the new submission should appear. Okay, so let's just go ahead and refresh it together right now. And there we go, we can see the new test has shown up. So we can see everything that I submitted is available now in Excel. And that's basically how you can go ahead and test it. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's how you can go ahead and use Zapier to create all kinds of amazing tests and zaps, which you can go ahead and use to automate your workflow. I hope you found this educational. If you did, then go ahead and press the like button and share it with your friends. And if you're interested in more content like this, then check out my channel. I make all kinds of tech videos and marketing tutorial videos. On that note, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.